Hello and welcome to the Global Dialogue. I'm Shireen Bhan and it is my pleasure to welcome back on the program the Global CEO of Alstom, Henry Lafarge, who's uh, been in India previously but hasn't been here for a while now. Mr. Lafarge, many thanks for joining us here uh, back on the program on Global Dialogue. The last conversation that you and I had in person was in 2018, so it's been a while since then. Uh, so welcome back. Thank you, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for hosting me uh, today. Yeah, it has been a while. We had COVID in the meantime, I have to say, but it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here back. Well, let me start by talking to you about the global outlook. Uh, it is a challenging environment that we live in today. Inflation, of course, continues to be a big worry and a big concern. How much of an impact is that likely to continue to have as far as the guidance that you've held out for 25-26? Well, the global environment is, is pretty good for us globally. Uh, as you know, there are a lot of countries in the world which are investing in railway infrastructure. I mean, this is the most sustainable means of transportation, so not surprisingly, a lot of authorities, public authorities, are heavily invested, uh, investing in this means of transportation. So the global market is very nice for us. It's very positive, very buoyant, I have to say, from Europe to North America to Asia, and here, of course, we'll come back to that in, in, in India. So we have a very good prospect. And of course, we had some macroeconomic challenges in the previous years. Uh, we had the inflation, we had the supply chains as well, mm. uh, disruptions which had happened. But I think these things are, are more smoothing uh, now in 2023. So we are moving positively uh, towards the uh, next years. Okay, so moving positively, you had an unprecedented uh, order backlog as well, uh, in excess of 87 billion euros. So you feel confident that demand is going to continue to look strong for you in the year ahead? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the demand is extremely strong. We see the pipeline rising. Uh, we have in the next uh, 18 months a record level of uh, tenders to be submitted. So the pipeline has never been as big as it is today. Uh, again, worldwide in the different regions of the world. It's probably one of the first times where all the continents are positively oriented. So there is no regions which are lagging behind. All the regions are heavily invested in rail. And whether it's for urban purposes, so a mm -hmm. lot of metros with large cities investing in metros to replace cars, and whether it's also for main line, and this is, uh, of, of course, to uh, allow people uh, to be transported, but it's also uh, a way to decrease the emission of CO2s. I, I'll get to the green transition in just a second, but I want to talk to you now about your India plans because you've, of course, been a long-term committed investor here in India. Uh, this is a big area where the government is accelerating its growth plans, its investment plans as well. How strong is the Indian market for you today? So let me tell you that India has been a, a fantastic growth story for us, both for the Indian market as well as for the export market. So yes, for the Indian market, we have the two or three main pillars, the first one being the urban market, where mm -hmm. we have almost 50 cities uh, with a metro project, and Alstom is involved in each and every metro project in all the cities in India, whether uh, it is on rolling stock or, or signaling or infrastructure. So the urban market is buoyant, but the mainline market is extremely important now, both in terms of passenger mainline, and this is relatively new uh, for us, in terms of components, traction equipment, as well as for locomotives, and we have a, as well a, a strong relationship uh, with Indian Railway on locomotives. But for passengers, we have both for Indian Railway and as well as for RTS, you know, the uh, delhi Meerut uh, mm -hmm. uh, corridor. Uh, you know, I want to talk about the India story with you a little bit more in specific. Uh, last year, I believe it was your fastest growing market. That's uh, 2022. Does it continue to be your fastest growing market? Uh, absolutely. I mean, the, our turnover in India has grown by more than 40 percent this year. Again, back on the local uh, market, the Indian market, which is booming. Uh, but we are also exporting more and more. Uh, you know that we have more than 25 percent of all the engineering being done in Alstom which has been done in India, and we are aiming at 33%. One third of the entire engineering activities of Alstom will be done in India. We have also our main uh, traction components, the traction boxes factory, which is in, uh, in Coimbatore, which is one third of the market. We have that in India uh, again. So you know that India for Alstom is today the first country in terms of number of employees. So the growth is supported both by the Indian market, which is growing very fast, as well as 
from a growing portion of export markets as well. Mm -hmm. uh, a billion euros in turnover from India, that was the target that was set for 2023. Do you believe you're on track to be able to achieve that? We, we have 4.2 billion euros of backlog to deliver. So yes, we are on track to this kind of numbers. Okay, let's talk about the big opportunity that seems to be opening up and that is the Vande Bharat opportunity. You've emerged as the lowest bidder, uh, L1, as far as that over 30,000 crore rupee order is concerned. But there are reports suggesting that there is a renegotiation underway with the government of India. Uh, can you shed some light on that for us? Well, first of all, let me outline how important is this uh, contract. It's, it's the first time that we will put in India an aluminium technology at large scale. So we are going to deploy this technology, which we don't yet have in India. We have stainless steel uh, technology, but we have the aluminium now uh, technology, uh, which will allow us to implement a hub for the export, an aluminium hub for the global export. So it's an extremely important, of course, project for Indian uh, teams. It's an extremely important project for Indian railway. I mean, it's a large uh, uh, railway world will allow as well to modernize some Indian railway uh, factories. And it's also a very important uh, project uh, for going forward for the export of India. So I will not call it renegotiation, as, as always. Uh, we, are, uh, we have conversation with Indian Railway to finalize the project, finalize the contract. As you can imagine, for such a large project, there are a lot of discussions, and we are discussing, and I'm very confident that we'll uh, achieve these discussions. Uh, but part of the discussion is the ask from the Indian government to bring down the price even lower, because I believe that it was set at 151 crores per train set, which was 11% lower uh, than the next bidder, which was your competitor, Standler. So uh, what is the ask of the government as you conduct these conversations? Well, first of all, we believe that we made a, a very, very uh, good price for this uh, 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 trains, of course, and, and you don't expect me to, to share with you all the day-to-day -day dialogue that we have. I mean, this is what, we, um, again, I'm confident that we'll finalize uh, the, the contract. Again, it, would be a, it is a fantastic project for Alstom, for the Indian Railway, and uh, for the Make in India in general. Uh, but you, while you can't uh, discuss the specifics of the contract or the price negotiations, what's the timeline by when you expect clarity on moving forward with this? As soon as possible. <laughs> as soon as possible. And what will that? Eventually, if this gets done and whatever price it gets done at, what will that mean in terms of operationalization of this? Uh, and, you know, what kind of investments will you need to make to be able to cater to this opportunity? So one thing which is important uh, to know is that, uh, again, this will be a new uh, technology. So we are starting, actually, to invest in terms of capabilities, in terms of know-how. So in Bangalore, we have a large engineering team to design these trains. Part of the trains and the aluminum technology will be done uh, as well uh, in the state of Gujarat, so in Savli, in our factory of Savli, where we are going to uh, uh, manufacture the, the body shell. And, uh, within the, the, the sites of, uh, of Indian Railway. So it's a, it's a several sites which will be involved, uh, which will need heavy investment, both internally in Alstom and on the sites of Indian Railway. Mm -hmm. Is there an estimate of what uh, the requirement will be on the we Alstom don't, no, side? We don't have clear uh, estimate there, but it's several tens of millions of euros. Okay. Uh, that's as far as the Vande Bharat opportunity is concerned. And, you know, is there any visibility on further tendering that the railway may do that you could be potentially interested well, in? Well, as you know, uh, the Indian Railway has launched several very large tenders. So as an equipment manufacturer, we are probably unique in that perspective that we have all the type of holic stock. So we are producing locomotives, we are producing uh, EMUs, so classical uh, regional trains, intercities push pull so with locomotives, with no locomotives. So we, are, uh, we are potentially interested by all uh, the tenders which will be launched by Indian Railways. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the metro opportunity as well because you've recently uh, done further orders with the MP uh, uh, Metro Rail Corporation as well as the DMRC here okay. uh, in, in Delhi. Uh, how is that, you know, looking at this point in time, the metro landscape in India at this point in time, given your previous experience? Well, we have a, 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 an increasingly large number of cities which are being equipped with metros. You know that India has become the fourth metro network in the world uh, after uh, China, Japan, and the, and the US. And it's going day after day. So what is interesting is, of course, the cities which, have already, uh, which are already equipped or partially equipped with metros, first off, uh, being uh, Delhi, but also uh, in, in Mumbai, they are extending their networks. 
or Bangalore is extending this network we also add ons in Chennai so all, all the metros where we are already implementing are extending their networks and we have uh, new cities with uh, new metros and we have been awarded uh, uh, metros in cities one of them of course extremely uh, well known which is Agra mm. we would be uh, extremely honored to be able to have a metro in Agra but was that in Kampur as we had in the past in Lucknow in Koshi uh, or in Bhopal and, and, and in other cities. So we have the really uh, metros being extended and as I said, roughly up to 50 cities uh, with some uh, metro projects. Uh, given the, the growth that you see in the Indian market as well as the further opportunity uh, to be able to sort of uh, expand here, what could the Asia Pacific contribution look like for you over the next five years? So globally, uh, India, uh, for us, is a footprint exporting not only engineering components, also exporting some complete trains. And we have exported trains in Australia, uh, for example, both uh, in Metro in Sydney, but also in Queensland. Uh, we have exported Metro uh, in, in Montreal, so we are also uh, exporting in different places uh, of the world. Asia-Pacific overall uh, is uh, probably the fastest growing uh, part of the world uh, for, for Alstom. And it's today, it's representing up to, I would say, 20% 20, 20 mm. of, of Alstom. And it's, it's growing. It's growing fast. Uh, and we are present in Asia Pacific from Australia. You know that yeah. Australia is booming in terms of public transportation. It was probably lagging behind uh, in the recent past. So they are investing a lot, particularly in urban transportation. We are very much present in Southeast Asia, in all countries of Southeast Asia. We have inaugurated a, a monorail uh, quite recently, for example, in, in, in Bangkok, but we are present in Malaysia, in Singapore. We have a metro in Vietnam as well. Mm. We have also been just awarded a metro in Philippines. So as you can see, we are present in all, uh, all these regions, in Taiwan as well. So it's a very large market for us, a very uh, a dance market, I would say. You know, the export opportunity that you've been touching upon uh, and, and you believe that India is going to be able to leverage that for uh, you and, of course, for the country as well. Uh, a slightly longer-term trajectory of how much headroom for growth potentially do you believe uh, the export market could throw up for Alstom from India? Well, I think it's, it's an immense, uh, an immense uh, potential uh, for the export, I mean. Uh, we are working on, with the Indian Authority as well uh, to make sure that financing is available. So mm. we are working on some opportunities which were uh, not envisaged before for, to uh, Central Asia, to Middle East, Africa. As, as the manufacturing capabilities, the manufacturing quality is improving in India, more and more countries are open uh, for the uh, Indian uh, imports on that mm -hmm. case. Uh, there are also, and I uh, clearly encourage that, a lot of discussion on free trade agreements between India and other countries, which will help uh, to, uh, for the import-export uh, from India. So I, I can see that, that as a, a, huge, a huge potential, which will be, again, coupled uh, with uh, local uh, growth as well, because the market in India will grow uh, very fast. So I'll not be surprised that in the coming years, India will be by far, by far the largest country for Alstom.